Hey Simonix, what's up? Welcome back to day 13 of the Ionic holiday calendar. Today I want to give you a little information on using the hardware back button and also using back button on your mouse in the browser because this can be tricky, so let's see how to do it. I've started so far a blank new Ionic application and I implemented two things, just regular things to route to a details page and go back and to open a model also on the details page. Um, if you want to know how I did this, uh, the code is simply to present a model using our details page and also passing is model true to the uh, model page, which will then be used on the details page to show either a close button if it is a modal or just use the standard buy on back button with a default href. So that's the logic behind this. Also, if you're using uh, a page as a modal, you have to add it to your app module imports as I did right here with the details page. So that allows us to open the details page. Uh, here's the regular close event. And now we come to the actual problems of this approach. So on the browser, I can go forward and I can click the mouse button or I can click here to go back, which works kind of nice. But if I open a modal, that actually doesn't work. It changes the URL and if I now close it, I'm still on the URL, so it is really confusing. So let's tackle this problem first. What we can do to overcome this problem is uh, use the Angular platform and I will show you how. So in our block here, we want to now also use the location. So we inject private location using platform location coming from Angular common. And I don't know why this is red. And then we can use the location and hopefully get on pop state. And we can now listen to this on pop state using our own function and not messing up the brackets, hopefully, and do whatever we want to do in here. So on pop, and I will just save this for now. So we see that this is triggered. This is not related to the hardware back button. But, well, the hardware back button on my mouse. So let's go to the modal and click back and we see on pop. That means we're now able to perform some action at this point. And the simple action could be to inject the modal controller, modal controller from Ionic Angular as always. And then once we click this pop state to uh, first of all get a modal, this modal controller get top to get the topmost modal. And because this is actually a promise, we can use async await in here as well. And then if we got a modal, we can simply call modal dismiss. Um, this miss. All right. Now we might think that this is enough, but actually it isn't enough. And you will see why. So let's go back to our homepage and let's refresh. We open the modal. We go back. We see actually the modal is popping back, but we're still on the details page because in the background, the back action is still triggered. And there's a tiny, well, kind of ugly hack to uh, fake and prevent this. And what we can do is to use the window history. And I will just bring in this snippet. So either at the point where we present the model or in the uh, on init of the model itself, we can manually push a state to the window history. So just a constructed state doesn't really matter what it is. Push it to the history. And then we will have like a fake state in our history and that will make all the difference. So let's go back to homepage, open the model and clicking back now, we see model closes, which we already achieved before, but now also we're dismissing this fake state. So uh, the regular back is happy. It can dismiss something and we're happy that it just dismissed this dummy part that we added to the view. So. This approach is important if you're planning to release your Ionic application for the web or using it as a progressive web app, for example. But we also want to improve the performance of the hardware back button on Android. Um, I got a lot of questions about this in the past and actually it is kind of um, straightforward, I would say. So let's do this, whatever, right here in the initialize app. 
What we can do with Ionic 4 or perhaps now Ionic 5 is already out, I'm not sure. We can easily subscribe to the back button or we can also subscribe with priority to make sure that our code is definitely triggered first. I will just mark this as Azuring right now. So at this point, you basically catch the back button of your device and you're free to do whatever you want to do. For example, um, you could stop the app or you can close the app, force close it. You can show an alert if you really want to go back. Um, you could, of course, also uh, subscribe to this in other pages. I've just done it now for the whole application, which might become a problem for you. So um, I found a nice snippet online, which I tweaked a bit and I will just insert it for now and I will show you why it's not yet working. So uh, of course we need an alert controller as well. Controller from Ionic Angular. And then you see we got something uh, with a router outlet. Let me just quickly add this. So view child, of course, like always, and this one from Ionic Angular. So this one will give us access to the current uh, router outlet. And it means if we currently have this router outlet and it can go back, which means we're basically on a details page, we will just go back, just pop and it's fine. But for example, if you want to check for a specific URL that you're on, using now the standard Angular router. Let's say we want to check if we're on the home page, which might be our basic root page, or for you it might be something else. Then we could, for example, show an alert. Do you want to close the app? Um, and if the user says yes, we can just call navigator app, exit app, um, or you could also produce an error. I think that should also work, but this is the more elegant way. And of course, this offers a lot of um, potential to perform different kind of checks. It won't affect, as I said, um, the web version. So this is still working as normal. But if I now bring in a view from my Android device, uh, so small, yeah, the resolution of this is really a problem. So I can go to a modal, uh, just like before. I can dismiss it. I can go to the details. But now I can also go back with my back button right here. And if I'm on the home screen and tap back, we see, do you really want to close the app? And if I go ahead with close, I would of course close the application. So a bit of this code, uh, especially the first part is needed um, because we're overriding the events and I think closing the modal and going back already works with the hardware back button. So I think this was fixed in like Ionic 4.6 or so. But if you want to hook into it, you can now easily subscribe to the back button and perform your actions. So I hope you enjoyed this quick guide into back for mobile and web with Ionic. Um, tomorrow, I don't know which day was it today. Oh, it's Friday the 13th. Uh, in Germany, this means bad luck. I hope you still have a great day. And tomorrow we will talk about a brand new topic. So see you tomorrow. Bye.